I love retro computing. I even love messing around with floppy disk. Because sometimes you just want to boot up a game and not fight with aging media. Or you find something cool online for your Apple II and then hit that wall. How do I actually get this onto a disk? There are ways, ADT Pro with a modern machine. I covered that in my previous SP to SD video, but that can be a bit of a hassle, especially if you're just trying to check something out real quick without losing momentum. And that's where this little guy comes in. This is the SP to SD V2, and it's kind of awesome. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. I'm really glad I'm able to get this Apple II related one to you during the month of April for the April Apple's community event. Jamie. It is no longer April. You missed it again. Again? Yes. This is becoming a pattern. Perhaps you need a diagnostics check. It's gonna be me. Quick shout out to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. And got a design ready? PCBWay makes it easy to bring it to life. Upload your files, pick your options, place your order. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just tinkering for fun, PCBWay delivers quality boards fast. So a little while back, Keikova from Keros Mac Mods reached out to see if I wanted to check out his new V2 version of the SP to SD SD card solution that would work on my Apple IIc and of course other Apple IIs. Quick heads up if you're using an Apple IIc, you'll need a compatible ROM for smart port support. Just type print peak and then put 64447 in parentheses and hit return just like this if it says 255 that's the original rom and it will not work you'll need to swap the chip and do a quick solder mod open jumper w1 and bridge w2 upgraded mine a while back pretty sure i bought it pre-made but honestly the rom images are online if you've got the gear to burn your own i'll drop some trusted sources in the description if you'd rather buy one ready to go and if you've got an apple 2c plus you're all set smart port works out of the box on those you don't even have to check I had previously purchased and checked out the earlier version he made and thought it was great. So I said, sure, but let's see what he sent us. So here's what arrived from Japan. Got this nice little personalized handwritten note and a cool little Satanic Mac Club stamp there. Got a fun little sticker here too. First thing we have upon opening the box here is a little bit of user documentation. I'll have a link to this document that you can check out online if you'd like. It looks like it goes over some of the improvements and some operational notes there. Okay, this is the optional DB19 kit. This allows you to use the smart port connection on the back of something like an Apple IIc like I've got. All right, what we have here looks to be a fully assembled prototype unit and it's already got an OLED display on it. I believe I'll end up using this display on the kit when I build it. And, uh, I probably won't need two of these. Maybe I can give one of them to Retro Combs if he doesn't have one yet. Did someone say free? Now, this is the standard kit PCB here. This is the pre-programmed Nano 328P board. And this is our 1N5817 diode and 1K resistor. This is the board that'll be the interface for an SD card. We've got several small pieces here. We've got a right angle tactile switch, three regular tactile switches. We've got a blue LED. We've got a IDC 20 box pin header and a seven pin header that will be used for the LED. And you won't see the OLED in this kit because I'm just gonna use the one from the pre-assembled prototype he had there but I think I'm gonna be able to dig out one of my junk pile so I can have a display on both completed ones. He just sent me the one display and I could use it on the pre-assembled one or on the one I make from the kit. Here's what you get with a standard kit here in the bottom right. And it does include an OLED display. Uh, the small one comes by default or you can pay a little more and get the larger 1.54. It also does not come with the 20 pin cable it doesn't come with an SD card, but you can get one that's preloaded. 
and like I mentioned before, it doesn't come with the optional DB19 adapter, but you can add that, or any of these options for that matter. All right, let's get the iron heated up and get this thing put together. The first component we're gonna stick in the board here is the diode, and you'll notice according to the instructions, we're gonna make sure the band on the diode matches up with the band on the PCB. Next, we stick the resistor in, and it has no orientation requirement, so you can flip it around any way you want. Next, we're going to stick the LED into the board, and we're going to follow the instructions, and we're going to make sure the short leg goes into the hole with the K. Stick a little blue tack on the LED to secure it, then I flip the whole thing over and solder what we've got in there so far. Then trim these excess leads. Next, we pop the three tactile switches in, flip it over, and solder all of those pins. Next, the right angle switch goes in, and we solder those pins. Next, we're instructed to get our SD card module and use a pair of pliers or something and take those pins and straighten them out so they point down directly away from the PCB. And once those are all good and straight, then you can insert these pins into the main PCB in the orientation that makes sense with the main body of the SD card board going over the PCB, just like this. Next, I used a little more blue tack to hold this in place while I flip things over and solder these pins. Then I trim the excess. Next, I stick in this seven pin header for the OLED display and secure it with a little bit of blue tack. I want to pause here for just a moment and let you know about this note here. We want to use the lower set of pins, not the upper that are right there together. The upper are only used if you're using a large 2.42 inch OLED display that has the pins reversed. So we want to make sure we're using this lower one, just like in the image here. After getting it secured, we just lean it over and solder the pins. Next, we're going to put our IDC20 connector on. Pay attention to the orientation of the notch so it matches the PCB, and it just goes in on this side of the PCB. And I'm going to use another little bit of blue tack here to hold this in place so it won't move around when we flip it over and solder it. Okay, now we're going to add our Arduino Nano 328P board. Pay attention to the USB connector location and the PCB there where it's telling us the orientation to put that thing in. This one already had the header solder on, so I just had to kind of finagle those around and get those squished through the holes. And the resulting way they were in there was a pretty tight fit, so I didn't have to use anything really to hold it in there when I flipped it over and soldered all those pins. With the soldering complete, I sprayed things with a little bit of alcohol and scrubbed it down with a swab. Next, I grabbed the display from the pre-built unit and stuck that into the one I just assembled. Next, it was time to work on this 19 pin adapter and you'll see you've got the 3D printed piece, a PCB, and this little strip with a bunch of pins on it, and also another IDC20 connector. And so what you're gonna do is break all these pins off, and then we're gonna insert them into the 3D printed piece. And if you wanna see how not to do it, I made a royal mess of this on my V1 video. So go back and watch my original SP to SD video, and I really screwed them up. It worked in the end, but it was 
not the way to do it. I think I got in too big of a hurry. So I'm gonna throw this graphic up real quick. This is the orientation and how you should insert these pins. So you wanna look at the flat part of the 3D printed piece, the piece that looks like it was printed face down and you wanna insert the pins just like shown on the diagram. And then I'm using the pliers to press them in all the way. I think there's a note in there that if you can't get them to go in, you can get a very small drill bit and kind of open it up slightly, but you gotta be very careful. You don't wanna make it so big that it just goes through. After you get all those in place, you wanna take the complete piece and then put that through the PCB. Just be patient. Sometimes it might be a little bit difficult to get all these to line up to go through, but it is possible. Just don't get in too big of a hurry and don't get frustrated. And once that's in there, you wanna solder all those pins. And lastly, we just want to put another IDC 20 connector on here and make sure that you put it on the right side. Notice these are on opposite sides of the PCB, and that's the way you wanna do that. So with these two pieces complete, I needed a way to connect them, and I did not have one of those cables loose and handy. And on the original one, I did not use the cable so I could make it where it would just plug right into the back of the Apple II to be real convenient. And I still kind of like that. So what I did was took apart my floppy emu and used that cable to test this. I've since ordered a four pack or so from Amazon. They're relatively cheap. That way I can put this one back in the floppy emu when I'm done and leave it dedicated to that purpose. I assumed that the original SD card I had with a couple of things on it would work in the new one even though it had the older, more restrictive file names and things, I thought that that would still be compatible with the new one, so I popped that SD card in just for giggles and wanted to see if that would work okay. So I plug the other end into the smart port on the back of the 2C, and then I powered things up. And as you can see here, it's got a cool splash screen, and then you see your four lines that would indicate you know your four images that you've kind of got loaded so i have stuff on this sd card and even some random junk but uh, i was able to hit enter when i was in the first position and then you can use just the the thing itself to go up and down and uh, navigate to subfolders if you have those and pick your image now i know from the old one and this is what's good about this one because you can see on the old one it's not a very user-friendly name it just says part one but i happen to know that's a an old total replay so i'm going to pick that and put it in slot one and then save it and then if i reboot again it should boot up into total replay and we can play around with some games and see if they work so you can see here that we booted up total replay so that means the construction of the card's okay so we're booting things up, the menu clearly works, so looks like the kit build was a success. And I'm just goofing around here and looking at some of the different games uh, through the menu where you can type keywords, and that all looks pretty good. And I really do love, with this new version too, it supports having things in folders, so you can take a SD card dedicated to Apple II stuff make folders, put uh, file names in there that have meaningful names, and it just makes it a whole lot easier to deal with. And you don't have to just pick four things and then go back to your PC to rename them or change a file or anything like that. You can change around what's in your four slots right there on the device itself, which is so cool. So what do I think about it? I love it. I love the improvements. I think the price is great. I think it would be hard to get something that gives you this many features for this price. There are some other things that are more expensive out there that are great, but for getting some images and playing around with your Apple II, this thing is gonna be hard to beat. And you can get it fully assembled or kit. And there are some options you can get if you need them. Now I will say, I do think I will keep on using the V1 that I have that's all consolidated together 
without the cable for when I go do public demos where I'm not really worried about changing the images and I'm just gonna let folks probably like play games with total replay, that kind of thing. I like it for that. And if you think you might like that form factor but aren't worried about a screen, he still does have these more compact ones here that you can buy pre-assembled, but I'm not sure what the quantity may be on that. And like I said, you lose the ability to change your images on the fly, but for certain situations, maybe that's okay. I wanna make sure to give a huge thank you to Keikoba. This is so cool. Thanks for sharing it with me. I can't wait to see what you come out with next to share with the community. I also wanted to say, you know, we've got this tariff thing going right now that's kind of been up and down here in the US. And because of that, Keikoba has got a very nice discount here. If you are ordering to the US and you're over a certain threshold, you'll get a little discount to help maybe offset some of that tariff cost. So that's really nice. There are a lot of cool community design cases for this that you can check out. I really want to check out one from Javier. Yeah, I printed a couple. I just need to round up these cables and an extra display. Hey, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.